Hey everyone, Miranda here, and today I've got not one, not two, but four unboxings for Manowar related models. Oh man, so finally Manowar Christmas has arrived. Anybody who has been waiting for viable lists for Manowar can rejoice knowing that there have been several releases. Right before um, Lock and Load, Privateer sent me the box set and a few other things uh, for the Manowar Theme Force. So that includes about 42 points worth of models. Uh, it comes with a full unit of five Manowar um, Demo Core. You've got Sergeant Dragos Dragatovich, um, the Commandant Atanas Arkanovich and Standard. So he's actually weird. He's kind of a standalone standard unit without being attached to a unit. Uh, you also have a full unit of plastic battle mechanics, um, the Manowar Suppression Tanker, so that's a new one, as well as a Greylord Forge Seer. Now, the idea is that you can get that box and combine it with the Kador starting set with um, um, Kozlov, and that will give you a full 35 point theme force list. So it's worth mentioning that there are some savings if you do buy the Theme Force set. The box set retails at $164.99, but on a retail comparison level, it has about $203 worth of models in it. So you save like $38 buying the box set over the units if it's going to be a bunch of stuff that you don't already have. But enough about that, let's see how these models look. So we'll start off with the Manowar Demo Core. So Personally, I own two units of the metal ones, and they are heavy. So the new plastic models are nice. There are some very little bits at the bottom. You'll notice their loincloth and the little back cover for them um, are very tiny. But the pieces all fit together remarkably well. I was actually really happy with, with how they fit in. The arms all socket into some ball joints and actually hold their kind of on their own, so very easy to glue together. The models came together really quickly. As someone had suggested on Twitter when you are assembling these, make sure to put on their loincloths before attaching them to their bases because otherwise it's a huge pain in the butt. But the detail comes across really nicely. Of course, they're nice and light. Um, some, of the, some of their hammers got a little bent, so you can use a heat gun or hot water to straighten that out. There are a couple of little insignias that come with this box set for the leader, and they're very easy to lose, so um, be careful with that. The models themselves all have critical freeze, so sometimes you're gonna get it, and a shatter. So if that critical freeze goes off, or if the model's already stationary, you gain boosted damage to that, which is already POW 16. So there's a new command attachment, the only one, for the demo core. He, he is Sergeant Dragos Dragatovich. He runs around with two ice malls, uh, just slamming stuff up. Now, as a commander, he offers his unit gr uh, granted vengeance, so if he dies, that goes away, and then tactics defensive line. So it does make the demo core a little more resilient on the battlefield. Now his model himself, he runs around again with two ice malls, POW 16. He is also tough, but still speed four. <laughs> It's nice to see Demo Core getting a little love. I really enjoyed them in Mark II because they could hit twice and, you know, if you run up with two units of them, it is a lot to deal with. So them getting a sergeant that can give them vengeance and make them a little more defensible and, and prevent them from being able to get knocked down, for example, does make, does make them a little more viable. So I'm glad that they're doing that. Um, I always thought Demo Core were really fun. Okay, so next up we've got, I believe, what are resin battle mechanics. They translated very well. They're identical as far as I can tell to their metal counterparts, but they came over perfectly well. You can see they're completely assembled. So all you do is glue them straight onto their base. This is after they have been based and primed because I always do my basing first. They work great. I think I will probably paint them up to replace my normal battle mechanics unit. The nice thing too is in the armored core theme force, anytime a model is affected by the repair special rule, mechanics, you actually get to remove an additional damage point. So they're a little more useful. Uh, I'm glad that they're including it in the box just to remind you to include support with your lists. So the Man of War Tankers are a new set of models that Privateer is putting out. This box set includes the Man of War Suppression Tanker, which is a very anti-infantry model. He stands quite a bit taller than regular Man of War. He, he just looks 
like a big hulking dude in all this armor. It's it's a really cool looking model. Does require sub assembly for the painting part of it, but it just it's you just attach two extra pieces. It's not that big a deal. The model himself is on a 50 millimeter base, so he's kind of tromping around with war jacks. He himself also has bulldoze, which of course is very handy for getting where you need to go. He has two volley guns attached to his big shield arms. They are range 10, pow 10, and then he has a few special things he can do with them. One of them is volley fire, so it's just a covering, a covering fire template at pow 10, so again that's anti-infantry. He also has a star attack called Full Blast, where you change your gun to a Spray 8 Power 14 weapon for, for that turn. And finally, he has a Volley Gun, which actually gives him boosted attack rolls against warrior models. So his whole design, again, is to be anti-infantry. The model himself boasts Armor 17 with plus 2 from his shield arms, so running around at Armor 19 with 8 hitboxes it's not so bad. And if the models do make it past all of that fire, he can hit you on the head with the shields, POW 12, range 1 half of an inch. So these guys are interesting. Commandant Atanas, Arkanovich, and Standard. They have battle plans. One is Heroic Call, which is range 5, and you can give a unit tough. Again, Mana War units. Uh, the other is Relentless Tide, so you can give Relentless Charge for one turn to a Mana War unit. Uh, which is basically getting Pathfinder. And then the last one is Unstoppable Fury, where the Man of War unit gains retaliatory strikes. So, you know, if, if you get hit, they get to hit you back, which is pretty awesome. Of course, they're repairable. Their command range is 10, but with the standard bear, it goes up to 12. They are also tacticians, so while in this model's command range, which could be 10 or 12 inches, Mana War models can ignore other friendly Mana War units when uh, determining line of sight. They can also advance through other models if they have enough movement. Now, having enough movement might be a little tricky, but um, it's still pretty cool. And then finally, you've got the Greylord Forge Seer, which is another support offensive hybrid model. Um, it can empower and remove disruption from Warjacks. It can also put Freezer on a, um, on a friendly unit. So an enemy model ending within two inches of, of a unit or model affected by that will become stationary. So you're making, taking better advantage of, I guess, the cold options. And then the standard Horrorfrost range 8 power 14 attack. And of course, Greylord Forge Seers, since they're running around in Man of War armor, are repairable. All right, next up we've got the Man of War Strike Tanker. The Strike Tanker is the same, almost identical model as the Suppression Tanker, except you'll see he has got a gigantic gun on the top. So just from reading the stat card, I really like the Strike Tanker. He seems super, super aggressive. He's got this big slug gun, which is range 12, POW 8, armor piercing and dual attack, so he can also melee and do his regular shot. The slug gun, like I said, is armor piercing. It also has grievous wounds, so you can't heal after being hit by it. And it's a siege weapon, so it gains an additional damage die against huge base models. So it is designed to go after battle engines and colossals and battle engine casters. <laughs> so it's a, it's a dangerous one to have on the field. Of course, it's Base armor 17, plus 2 from the shield arms, so running around at armor 19. 50 millimeter base, speed 4, it's not, it's not getting there fast, but it is going to be a hard hitter, especially against those um, really heavy, uh, huge base models that your opponent brings. And he's only 5 points. Alright, and next up is the Man of War Bombardier Officer. So, we've gotten two officers released in this new wave. Um, Way back when, the Man of War Shock Troopers were, of course, the first to get the Man of War Officer um, for them specifically, but now we've got Sergeant Drago Stragatovich and now the a generic Bombardier Man of War Officer. The Officer, however, does offer a lot of new things to the Bombardier unit. One of the granted abilities is called Clear Out, so if all models in are, are in formation, they gain Pathfinder. Uh, she also offers the tactics Quick Work, so if a model kills something, they can make a ranged attack right after. And she has a mini feat called Support Fire, which allows Bombardiers, once per game, to actually shoot twice in the same turn. So when you really, really need to burn the enemy down, you do have that option. Now, Bombardiers themselves are only Rat 6, but the Officer is Rat 7, so her hits are probably going to make it, for the most part, and they're POW 14 attacks, so they're no joke. 
And then she has the same stuff as all the bombardiers, arcing fire and critical shred. So if you critical on your attack roll with the weapon, you can make an additional melee attack. Okay, now for the one I know everyone's really excited about. We have Commandant Sorsha Kratikov, or Sorsha 3. Uh, this model comes as a resin metal hybrid piece. She is slightly smaller than a standard Man of War because, you know, she's just not as big as the dudes in Man of War armor as it happens. She also maintains her scythe hammer, the Frost Fang. Uh, in addition, she has a range 12 POW 13 cannon. That's an AoE 3. She's rat 6, so, you know, not, not amazing there. She's still going to be more of a melee beast at mat 7. And here's what the piece looks like completely assembled. You can see plenty of detail. You can still tell it's Sorsha in there with her iconic bob uh, and of course her frost fang. And she is going to look fantastic running across the battlefield with Beast 09. A nice thing also is that her frost fang has been upgraded to just have freeze instead of critical freeze. So if she hits you at all, you are stationary, unless you're immune to cold. She herself is repairable as a Man of War model. She also has a passive ability called Storm's Embrace, so everyone within her command range of 9 is going to gain concealment just passively. So you don't really need to have Fog of War up anymore, you just get it, and it's only benefiting your models. You don't have to worry about dealing with, with, it, with enemies around. Frostfang also now has Critical Smite, so if she hits you hard enough or crits with it, she can toss you. And she's super strong now at strength 9 in that Man War suit. She has four spells on her list, two of which we are plenty familiar with. The first one is Iron Flesh, which gives you plus two armor and immunity to blast damage. The second one is Wind Rush, so the model can make a full advance and gains plus two defense until the end of the round. Sorsha is only base defense 12, so she's probably going to be using that pretty often. Then she's got a cost 3 spell called Winter's Wrath. So it's range 8, POW 14, AoE 3. Um, models that are hit become stationary, which is nice. And then, of course, this the POW 14 damage may well just kill you anyway. But it's probably really good for going up against War Beasts and War Jacks. Then she has a new spell called Stoke the Fires. It costs 1 and it's range 6. It gives a friendly War Jack plus 2 speed and counter charge. So just remember, we're talking about a mana war list here, where the warjacks are usually moving faster than the mana war. If you're putting the mana war in strategic positions and guarding them with warjacks, then counter charge is going to be kind of a big deal. Then you have Sorsha's feet called Dead of Winter. For the feet, you place D3 plus 3, so anywhere from 4 to 6, 3-inch AoE cloud effects anywhere within her control area. Any model that is not immune to cold entering or ending its activation within any of those AoEs suffers one point of damage. The one point of damage seems more just to deter general enemy infantry, uh, but I suspect that it's mostly going to get used for the cloud effect version or the cloud effect side of it so that you're blocking line of sight from your enemy after you've maybe just extended yourself a bit. So that is my unboxing of all these beautiful new models. Thank you Privateer for sending them to me to unbox. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Are you interested in the Man of War Theme Force box set? Have you been waiting all this time like I have for a good Man of War Theme Force? I know I'm looking forward to trying these out on the table. What about you guys? And uh, Swarsha 3? She does look pretty cool. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!